The professional bass fishing tournament world has been shocked by the youth coming in and being successful. People want to say it's because of forward facing sonar, but I'm going to dive deep into why that is not the case. I've been a high school fishing coach for the last nine years. I believe I have a different side of the view than 99% of the people as I've watched the development of young anglers to be, be prepared more than ever before. In this video, you'll also get to experience a recent fishing trip where myself and one of my student anglers go out and practice on our craft. Forward facing sonar has been the big debate in the last two years in professional tournament fishing. One of the major factors to this is how the younger anglers have took more time to learn this tool and to use it to beat the veteran anglers. This statement can be true in some scenarios, but I'm here to tell you that the youth movement is not dependent on forward-facing sonar. This monster youth movement has been created by other factors. These kids can't catch fish without live scope. Can't do it. Can't catch fish without live scope. Y'all see them just flip that bush though? Y'all just think they throw a jig head minnow around. You've got more fish with a jig than a jig head minnow, haven't you? Oh yeah, no doubt. I remember waiting to watch fishing shows on TV when they rarely came on when I was in that age range of 12 to 17, 18 years old. These shows included Hank Parker, Bill Dance, Jimmy Houston, then Mark Zona had his World's Greatest Fishing Show which eventually turned into the Awesome Fishing Show. Then we had tournament shows that finally got a live segment. These shows were my opportunities to learn, to grow, to try to become better as an angler. I remember being in my dorm room at college even, watching the FLW Bassmaster recap shows to learn as much as possible. But also in my young age, when I was watching Bill Dance and some of these other TV shows, I realized they were not fishing Lake Washington lakes I was fishing. At times I even noticed that they were fishing small private lakes or ponds that of course was nothing like I was fishing. Oh dude, look at that guy right there. That's a dang freaking Oh. You just work it. Look at those dudes all swimming together. Got him. Oh. Yeah, you, you, you just let that thing fight. And you don't, 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 don't try to get him in. Coming up. There we go. <laughs> good job. Oh, That's good, good stuff. Fish. That's a good one right there. Is that your biggest Mickey rig fish? That's close. That's close. Look at the thing just came out. What a, what a, what a fight that was. Get that thing up here. Hey, just put me down. Here we go, guys. First one of the day. These kids, you know, they can only fish with that live scope, can't you? Yep. So how about that bite? That's fun. Yeah, so That's fun. that thing bit close to the boat, didn't it? Uh-huh. Like five feet from the boat, probably. You thought it was about to get you in a tree, huh? No doubt. I saw a tree on the live scope. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, guys, there's like four or five of them right there. And I, I brought him in with mine, and he just tossed it out there. And I was like, dude, just fish it. Like, we didn't watch that one eat guys on the live scope. We didn't. I was like, dude, just keep fishing it. And I turned around, and he and it just started going. And I was like, yes. Today and in recent years, YouTube has taken over. From that mid-2015s on, there has been bass fishing videos on YouTube and so much information on YouTube than ever, ever before. But guys, with all this information to gather in, it's sometimes too much information. But how do you take this information and then go apply it on the water? That is where the next factor comes in. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't have my I didn't have my drag set right. Oh. It was still loose from the last one. Dang. Darn. Oh. Stop. Yeah. Be. Hang on. Hang on. I'm not gonna hit it. Darn. That was a good one. Dad. Gum it. it. Yeah. You. You stopped the deal. Nah. Gotcha. I saw him coming and I gave it a little bit of a harder pop. Uh oh. Here he comes. Got it? Yeah. Good? Yeah. Oh, I just made a big mess, but it'll be all right. Oh, that wasn't ready. How about these guys are jumping? All right, I'm gonna let them fight. I'm gonna let them fight. We're on the stump, too. Uh-oh, he's going to the stump. Oh, oh my gosh, how do you not knock him off? That's a good one. I, I, might just go, I might just go down and get them next time. I'm about to go down and get them. They jump so much. <laughs> Both of those fish. Look at that guy. Hey, number two, guys. Number two on the O. Oh, Chicken minnow. <laughs> I've been a high school fishing coach for nine years. 
the best part of this has been the relationships I have with my anglers that have stayed for years after high school. I've watched these kids grow to young men, but I also get to keep fishing with them. In the nine years I've been a coach, I've boat captained a team to a state championship. Then at my other school, I've been a coach to a team that has been state runner-up twice. I remember taking kids out in the lake to teach them how to catch bass offshore with marker buoys, no mapping, 2D sonar, searching for fish that others are not looking for. And now today, we're using electronics, but also utilizing the power of forward-facing sonar since we have it available. I've gone from teaching kids how to catch bass with deep diving crankbaits, jigs, to throwing big flutter spoons and timber. There's some out there. This wind sucks. Yep. Watch out, watch out, watch out. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Boom. Oh. Boom. Dixie in the house. <laughs> Dixie in the house. There we go, guys. Y'all just watched that one. The old Dixie Dead Talon Spoon. What was pretty cool about that bite was it was out there in timber. Uh, you know, I was taught and stolen the Miki rig. I've been trying to throw the spoon right now to try to get us another good one. And man, like I saw the mouth and I said, here we go. And uh, threw that thing, worked it, worked it. He came up there and hammered it. What a sweet, sweet bite. This fishing trip today is with my man, Houghton Howard. I've been fishing with Houghton for six years. We've had a lot of trips without forward-facing sonar, and now that we have it, we are using it to its fullest potential. Like today in our trip here, we wanted to catch bass in some tough situations with a lot of tough cover nearby. Today's video is brought to you by Future Marine. I'd like to share with you the boat of the week. This right here is about to be the 2025 Express H20 Bass Series. The Hyper Lift Series is now in the bass boats, guys. This thing right here, one unique feature about the boat I'm gonna talk about is the storage capacity up there on the front deck. They have a new design with the storage, and man, I think it is great if you have a lot of tackle, rods. Also with that front deck, good enough size to fit a couple people on and fish in this comfortably. This all well construction aluminum boat guys has a 175 Yamaha four stroke the aluminum boats guys are starting to get into the bass fishing world and take it over and guys the Expressor was one of the first companies out there go ahead if you want any more information on this Express or other Express the link to Future Marine will be in the description ask for Tony Hodge Mason Tuberville when you call them and guys we appreciate you appreciate Future Marine for being a part of my fishing business guys they are great people third generation family business and that's who I would like to work with is people that are family businesses. Now let's get back to the video. Okay, were they more shower? Yeah, oh my goodness. Are they following you? No, I can't see them. Okay, man. Oh, need net. Hair jig, love the old hair jig. This fish is fighting, man. Sure you want to boat flip? Yeah, I'll boat flip him. Oh, he's hooked weird. Yes, <laughs> the old hair jig, he got hooked weird. Oh, guys, I love the old hair jig. So there's some fish. There's some fish up here off the side of this point. That dude must have kind of got hooked where there's some fish and they were fighting for this thing. So how I saw him, and guys, I wasn't really watching with the last scope. I think we might have watched him. It's like a good two pound fish. But guys, with the hair jig, man, when they're kind of positioned, this is a pressured lake. Dude, this guy right here, I talk about it, is a fun bite. Cody Huff won a major tournament event while in college at Toledo Bend in February 2020. This is right after he won a college event there. Cody utilized forward facing sonar, and this may be the first major tournament where forward facing sonar dominated. It was even noted by anglers that he was not even on the same lake. Later in 2020, the bass fishing world got to see the power of forward facing sonar at Lake Fork when Patrick Walters won a fall event almost by 30 pounds. This was the first tournament noted and shown to the world where the power of forward-facing sonar came into play and the heads began to spin right then in the fast fishing world. Patrick though guys did not just 
turn the live scope on and put it in the lake. Patrick used his knowledge from prior fishing. Patrick guys won a tournament on the Red River. I believe there was an open tournament, guys, and he didn't have live scope on his boat then. Red River is not like Lake Fork. Patrick Waters, as many other anglers I'm about to get into, has knowledge and experience. And then they use forward facing sonar to their advantage and they learn more and more and more. It's like I even say to, with me, I grew up fishing without it, learned a lot of things, but now with it, you learn more about fish, how they behave, where they're at. But you still need to find that prior knowledge of how to locate and how these bass move. The knowledge of the younger anglers today is at higher bar than ever before. Not just the 20 year olds, but the anglers like Patrick Walters, who's 29, Jacob Wheeler, 34, Jordan Lee, 32, Dustin Connell, 34, and Matt Becker at 32. Just a couple of examples. This is the age of anglers that I think right now is to be considered the most dangerous. They had the time on the water, the experience prior to forward facing sonar, and learned the tools that they had. and understood fish behavior, caught fish in a very variety of ways. You've seen Jacob Wheeler fish topwaters at events and won tournaments. All of these guys, Dustin Connell's a river rat, as you know, all of these guys had prior strengths, but then they took the time to learn it and it set their bar even higher. But a lot of people just think they just drop it in the lake and go catch fish. That is not the case. You do now, huh? Come get it, son. How far? I missed it. He hid right there? At the boat. Are oh, they still there where they at? They're all down there on the bottom too. Yeah, how cool is that? That's a, <laughs> That's a good one. Oh, it never even touched the carpet. It will now, though. That dude, dude he ate it before it, it got in the live scope screen. Yeah. Sweet, guys. Here we go, right here. This one was caught on the yo. Sexy shadow glass falcon. The old sexy fountain. The younger anglers, as we've seen, are more prepared and better today than they ever have been. I don't think it's gonna stop, but not just younger anglers. Guys, all the anglers are getting better. You're getting better, I'm getting better because of the information out there, but there's still one more factor of this information of taking it and applying it. And guys, that is time on the water, okay? More time on the water is better. Not just old time. Your old history time is there. It's very, very, very valuable. But the more time you have with the forward-facing sonar, with all this information, will make you a better angler. Guys, for example, though, let's talk about some other sports. Football, baseball, just two, for example. Golf, you can even say. These athletes in those sports are better right now than they've ever been. They throw a baseball harder. They hit baseballs farther. The guys, they throw a football better. I mean, there's not just they're they're stronger because of the workouts, the training, what we know, but also the knowledge, guys. Football changes. As I was a former football coach, the schemes change, the plays change, athletes change, and guys, as you watch professional sports right now, it is changing. Patrick Walters is an example, has changed the sport. Tom Brady had his moment, Peyton Manning, but Patrick is different than those guys, and that's because we develop and get better and better and better. Golf right now, they're stronger and better than ever, but with this, guys, veterans don't always make it in football because of age because of the body and guys that's one thing that's happening right now these youth are on the water so much more and they're taking their time they're they're wanting it more and some of these veterans is kind of getting a spot and it's not just that guys i, I love the veterans guys i look up to i like i look up to them i'm there but i'm just saying like like those some of those guys are deer hunting and some of those guys are hanging out with their families and these young guys don't have a family they don't deer hunt guys they're these younger anglers don't play any other sport but fish that's something that's happening now is they're not playing baseball football basketball they're just fishing and that's what we have created is this monster and i think it's great guys i think I like the sport of fishing growing as we we say it is growing some people's not but some of these veterans 
wanted it to grow, but they wanted it to grow for themselves. They wanted more people to watch them. They wanted more people to watch those guys, the, them, but they, they didn't want those young guys coming in and taking their money, and that is what's happening, taking their sponsorship opportunities, taking their paychecks in these tournaments, and so that is the monster we've created, and guys, that's fine. I think the better competition makes us better anglers. The information makes us better. I know there's a conversation side about forward face and sonar and affecting fisheries. Guys, I'm not getting into that. I'm not talking about that today, okay? I'm, I'm not. I think it'd be cool to have a tournament without forward face and sonar, like on the elite level or MOLF. Like, I think it'd be sweet. That last Florida event where uh, Jordan Lee just cracked him on a frog, that was great, okay? I mean, wonderful. Like, I, I think it'd be cool for us to see that. But, guys, it's not going to go away. And that's one thing here is these young guys are on the time more. They're, they have the information, and that's just part of the best part of it, guys. And it's pretty cool just for me to see the development of it. But guys, we're very lucky to go out and be able to fish on these waters and then ha be in a country to where we can just go do this, okay? So there's so much negativity in it right now. Let's try to be positive with it and how we're just getting better as anglers, guys. Quick, guys. Poles everywhere. It's going crazy, guys. Man Houghton's up here. He's on a little dry spell right now. What's the deal, man? <laughs> we have not had the best day of execution, guys. But it's been fun down the water. We have like almost un almost 18 pounds right now uh, with our best five. None over five today, though. Um, but guys, what kind of right there happened? Just a little teaching point. Just one thing with the forward facing sonar. He had the jig head minnow, and he I don't I don't even know. I, he saw the fish. I didn't see the fish, and he threw it. Was working it, and all of a sudden, like four or five followed to the boat. He had one actually hit it at the boat. I missed that, but I saw them there coming. And there was some behind it. I picked up that spoon and uh, I was going to toss it out there. And he had one miss it. He just threw that thing. I don't want to get hit. And then um, I tossed it out there. Boom, got one. It was a sweet bite. And so here he is, still getting after it. Still getting after it. It's pretty cool, guys. Um, like like this guy here. I don't know what I'm saying in the video, but like I, I think I've been with you and you've caught in two of your PBs. Yeah, and then I, yeah, so so his first two personal, well, newer personal bests, I guess, that were, it was a 5'2", then maybe a 5'8", I was with them, and we caught those fish without forward facing sonar, guys, uh, both were offshore, well, no, one was on a bladed jig, and then the other one was on a, a big crankbait, big 10XD, and uh, so we've been fishing together for a long time, long time, man, it's cool, to, yeah, I mean, like, you were like, dude, you are like nine years old, uh oh, we hung, we hung with Big Spoon, Big Dixie. But yeah, so it's cool. He's like nine years old, I think. Um, pretty neat. And you're like, how was he throwing a 10 XD? Well, guys, his dad is pretty smart. Uh, and his dad was a former coach. He's not coaching anymore, but he's a former coach. But he's still a teacher coach because he, he's a preacher. So he's still like a teacher. And, and you're, once you're a coach, you're always a coach. But I learned from him. And if you're a father still watching this with a young kid, he had a little young son stand by him. And you can do it with your daughter, too. Young son stand by him. And he made the cast with the 10 XD and then handed him the rod. How about that, guys? So you can do little things like that. So on baits with treble hooks, and maybe they can't cast as far, he would cast, hand him the rod, and then let him reel it in. Pretty cool. And and, and we caught these fish without live scope, by the way. I know today we're using it. And I would have never caught that fish without live scope, but yeah, it's just the power of it. Let's go ahead, this part of the video, shout out to Halton and Garrett, his partner, Halton Howard, Garrett Westfall. Shout out to those two young men. They just got second place in the recent Bass uh, Nation Youth Bass, Arkansas Youth Bass Nation and Event State Championship at Lake Washita. They fished the junior division. You've seen these kids on my YouTube channel before as Halton was right here. Guys, they've came a long ways in the recent years. And they're just going to continue to get better if they want to and if they want to continue to keep fishing if they have a desire. And pretty cool deal right there. Shout out to them guys. Okay, guys, this is a new part of the video series, the encouraging word of the week, a variety of different types of deals. I had one for, I have a couple stories I'm going to do at times and encouraging words right now. I'm going to share another just kind of encouraging word, motivating word for you guys, something that kind of goes to me, uh, and not just right now, but just like when I was younger, I kind of had this, and it's kind of at times it's here and there now with I have kids, and it's just, oh, my. Anyway, but guys, it is, it's is—it's about kind of being stressful and, and worrying, Okay. When I was younger, I was always a guy that just worried. I worried. I'm talking younger, like 16 to 22, 23 years old. I was always just a, like a, at times a stress ball. 
I don't know why, but as I've gotten older, I've gotten more mature in that. And I don't really try to stretch as much. But lately, with just so much going on and everything, it just seems like it's coming back. And with two kids at the house right now, if you're a parent or been a parent, you know, it's just like life's flying, flying by. And like, it's just, oh, it's just going everywhere, a bunch of moving parts. So with that, guys, on the worrying, okay, one thing I always have to remember, to remind myself is the verse, Matthew 6, 34. Hopefully I say it right because I'm, I'm not the best with always memorizing things. But 634, tomorrow. Uh, do not be, do not worry about tomorrow, or some some, some uh, translation says anxious, but do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be, will, will, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself, okay? So one thing about that is, is like, guys, just take in the present moment. Take everything in. Do not try to think about the next day, the next week, the next month. And I say don't think about it as that. Don't let it be a burden on you, okay? Try to enjoy the moment. Life short. Life short for y'all. Life short for me. So we're not going to be here long. So enjoy every moment. If it's you with your wife, your your kids, if it's just if you're just single and you're just there, guys, whatever it is, worry about the present day and enjoy it, okay? Enjoy all the opportunities that we get, okay? And that's one thing with me. As I've gotten older, I'll go ahead and say it, guys. One of the guys that uh I've learned a lot from on this is my father-in-law, my, my, my wife's dad. He somehow that's one of his like there, there's you know people have like a lot of like i think strengths one of his always is like he he just never shows any worriness or stress at all and i learned that from him and that was one thing when i was growing up he always just would like tell me hey don't worry about this don't worry about that and and as i've gotten older like I, there was a part of me where i like i just stopped like and i'm talking there's a good year bit there where, like, i just rolled through it and i, I still do that kind of today but as it's lately with everything going on I'm like oh my gosh so guys just with that try to enjoy the present day worry about today how you can get better as a person how you can be better at whatever you're doing your work your, your life whatever it is guys appreciate you watching today's video um and thank you guys once again let me know what you think about it let me know what you think about this part in the comments if you're still watching right here we trying to name this segment of the video i've heard uh one of the ones was faith juice i like that one and guys appreciate it we'll see you on the next one